All right, once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baal Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baal Shem, Raka, Kudash. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're in. So this video was put up by um, Elder Pastor, and the name of the video is entitled, America Has Nothing to Do with 2nd Esdras 11 or 12. And really it's a re response to a video that um, the illustrious Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC did where he made a couple of mistakes. And I'll play the first mistake. And um, the first mistake really is a mistake anyone could make that was part of the school that uh, are f that is familiar with the breakdown of Obadiah, the first chapter where it says, uh, do, thou, do, thy, do thou set thy nest among the stars. Now, back in the old school, we used to teach that happened about 1969 when Esau first landed on the moon. We make reference to the Apollo mission where Esau landed on the moon. Well, so far in our research, we have found out that Esau never made it to the moon, that that was actually a hoax. And what that means in reality, though thou set thy nest among the stars, among the stars meaning in outer space. What Esau has done is set up uh, military weapons in outer space, also set up space platforms so that the, uh, the top wicked elite can escape when the deal goes down. This is why when you read in the book of uh, uh, Amos, let's get that real quick. Amos, the uh, I'll give you the scripture in a moment. Amos, the ninth chapter. Yeah, here it is right here. Amos, the ninth chapter. I'll just go right to the point. The second verse. Though they dig into hell, what does that mean? That's talking about the bomb shelters that the wicked elite have prepared for themselves. Again, when the deal goes down, what is the deal? When America is totally destroyed by those nuclear missiles and the chariots of the Lord. Uh, the wicked elite around the world, they're going to be hiding in their bomb shelters. That's what it means, though they dig into hell. Another scripture that, that backs that up is... Uh, the scripture in Revelation. Let me see if I can find that. For upon us. All right, bear with me for a minute. Mountains and the rocks. And there's videos you can find on YouTube that goes into that. These comfortable bomb shelters that the wicked elite have built for themselves. Again, when the deal goes down, the destruction of Babylon, the great America, which is going to be destroyed totally by fire. Fire of the chariots and the nuclear missiles. This is the book of Revelation 6. And... Uh, eh, Start the 14th verse, it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And that's talking about the mushroom cloud of uh, radiation. A good example is uh, what happened over the uh, city of Hiroshima. Now you can uh, type in the Hiroshima bomb attack. And you'll, you'll see the picture of the mushroom cloud Uh that was produced over the city of Hiroshima once the atomic bomb was dropped. I believe it was uh, Fat Man. All right, Fat Man, that was the name, the code name of the atomic bomb. And then you had Little Boy, Fat Man and Little Boy. Little Boy was dropped over Nagasaki. All right, now Fat, Fat Man, the code name for the first atomic bomb dropped and I believe it was August the 6th, 1945. I'm going off the top of my head with this stuff, so bear with me. Um, 
it killed over 140,000 people. I think that was the count. All right. And then Nagasaki, uh, the city of Nagasaki, both cities located in Japan, little boy killed over 70,000. Okay. So the point is when the bomb exploded over Hiroshima, it produced this gigantic uh, nuclear cloud because it was atomic warfare. All right. It, this gigantic cloud of smoke was over the city of uh, Hiroshima and it instantly vaporized the city. Basically, it turned the city into the Stone Age. So going back to Revelation 6 and 14, and the heaven departed as a scroll. So that's going to happen again when these bombs are exploded over America. All right, you're going to see that huge mushroom cloud once again. It's going to block out the sun. You're going to have what is called, over here in America, you're going to have what is called nuclear winter, a nuclear winter. And that's going to set the stage for America to be 100% desert. Okay? So this is what, this is the vision that the Apostle John saw, which is recorded here. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, this reminds me of what is written in the prophecy in Haggai, where it, where it is said, once again, the Lord said, I arise to shake the earth. That's Haggai, the second chapter, the sixth verse. And that's exactly what those missiles are going to do. All right, those missiles are going to shake the earth. Their power is so great that they're going to shake the earth along with the chariots of the Lord. Okay, now going into the 15th verse, and the kings of the earth and the great men, those are your rich banking families, and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men, uh, these are prominent men of Esau society, prominent men. And every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. That's your bomb shelters. It's not going to say, the scripture is not going to say bomb shelter, all right? <laughs> For those of you that don't believe it, it's not going to say bomb shelter. That terminology didn't come till many years after these scriptures were written. And I might add, they were written first in Hebrew and then Greek, okay? And, and uh, you have to break the code to understand what it's saying. So when it says, they hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Those are your bomb shelters, your underground bomb shelters. Right? And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Who's that? Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai is coming to make war with Esau. Yahweh Shai is coming to destroy Esau's worldwide kingdom. Okay, that's why Yahweh Shai is coming back. Besides the, the, uh, to deliver his elect... And then later set up the, his kingdom upon the planet Earth. He's coming to wage war against Esau and all the other nations that are ruling with Esau that are trying to bring something called a new world order. So Yahweh is coming to destroy that. Okay. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The Lamb is... <coughs> The lamb is Yahweh Shai. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall abide? I'm sorry, who shall stand? What's the answer to that? Who shall stand? The elect. His elect will stand. Because he's going to deliver his elect. All right. So uh, that was Revelation, the sixth chapter, which speaks about the bomb shelters, particularly in the 15th verse. Now, when you go to the book of Amos, it also talks about the bomb shelters. All right. Revelation is more specific. It goes into it. But Amos 9, the second verse mentions it, too. It says, Amos 9 and 2, though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. So what does that mean? Who the hell would dig into hell if hell is supposed to be a place where you got the devil down there with a, with a, a, a fiery tartan suit? With an arrow for a tail and a pitchfork. <laughs> That's nothing but fantasy, man. All right? Though they dig into hell, what that means is your bomb shelter. Once again, the hell hell represents the grave or the earth. So if they're digging into earth, that means their bomb shelter. Again, you're not going to see the term 
bomb shelter in the Bible. But it doesn't mean that it's not in there. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. Right. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. Now, that lines up with uh, Isaiah, the uh, 24th chapter. If you go in Isaiah, the 24th chapter, it speaks about how, uh, also Psalms, the 149th chapter, it speaks about how the day is going to come when these wicked elites are going to be hiding in their bomb shelters around the world. And after the destruction, we're going to have the pleasure of going and get, get them and slap chains on them. First, we're going to, well, we're going to slap chains on them and then throw them in a pit. And then their first job is going to be burying bodies, burying the dead bodies that's, that's going to be left primarily in the Middle East. Okay, and the, the scripture for that is Ezekiel, the 38th chapter, going into the 39th chapter. All right, that's going to be their first job, digging holes to bury bodies. Okay, the, the super rich elite. Okay, Isaiah 24 and um, Isaiah 24 and Isaiah 24 and uh, 19. It says the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. This is post nuclear destruction. The earth is moved exceedingly. Now we just read that earlier in the other scripture. All right, uh, the, the, the islands moved out of their place. And then I quoted to you uh, Haggai 2 and 6, where the Lord said, he, he, once again, he rises to shake the earth. Then read on, it says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. That's the nuclear destruction. That's the bombs exploding, the wall of fire, which the Bible calls it the besom of destruction. Also the chariots of the Lord bringing maximum destruction as well. Therefore, uh, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. There you go. That's your top banking families that's going to survive the destruction. Why? Because they got outer space retreats, right? And they got uh, underground bomb shelters that are many miles underground. Comfortable bomb shelters. Like I said, there's videos you can pull up on YouTube to see this. All right. Uh, uh, I remember there was a video, uh, Chloe Kardashian, I think it was. Uh, she was uh, she was talking about a comfortable bomb shelter, if I remember correctly. Okay, there's a video dealing with that. Anyway, and it shall come to pass that that in that day the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. And the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. And shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Right. So we're going to have the pleasure of going and getting those top banking families. And ch putting chains on them. All right. We're going to have the pleasure of ripping them out of those bomb shelters. Those comfortable bomb shelters they're going to be in. Uh, slapping chains on them and then we're going to throw them in a pit and then after a while we're going to come and visit them and their first job is going to be to bury these dead bodies okay let's get the book of psalms the 149th chapter so that's going to be the future of the top banking elite starting with them uh, psalm 149 and 5 let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains. Now, we just read in Isaiah 24, they're going to be rounded up from their bomb shelters, though they dig into hell, thence will my hand take them. We are the Lord's hand. We're going to take them out of their bomb shelters. We're going to uh, bind them with chains, like I'm reading here. Then we're going to throw them in a pit. And then after many days, like it says, we're going to visit them. And their first job when they come out of that pit is to bury these bodies, bury these dead bodies so that the earth could be cleansed. We're not going to bury those bodies. They are. Okay. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. This is a future prophecy, by the way. To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. And when you go in Revelation 13, it speaks about the judgment. He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. So again, Amos 9 and 2, though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them, 
Now here's the point. Though they climb up to heaven, that's your space retreat. All right, that's your space centers. Thence will I bring them down. Not too long ago, they they sent uh, they sent this astronaut. Um, the hell was his name? I think it was Armstrong, the oldest man to go into outer space. Let's let, let's see. The oldest man. The oldest man to go into outer space. The reason why they sent him. The reason why they sent him up there, this man, is because a lot of the top banking families, a lot of those guys are old, the men as well as the women. So they want to get the, the data to find out how long can a person survive in outer space. And the reason being is because, now listen good, the reason being is because they know that nuclear war is imminent. So they want to survive it. The oldest man to go into outer space to go into space there we go okay so it was senator john herschel glenn jr senator john herschel glenn jr okay nearly four decades after he became the first american to orbit the earth senator now wait a minute Senator John Herschel Glenn. Now, if indeed we did really go to the moon, why didn't he go to the moon? <laughs> why didn't this sen senator go to the moon? Because the truth is, Esau's never been to the moon. You know how far the moon is from the planet Earth? Then there's a thing called um, the Van Allen Belt, which is uh, it starts about a thousand miles above the Earth, the Earth's atmosphere. And it stretches for 25,000 miles. That's pure radiation. All right. Google the Van Allen belt. Okay. And the best evidence that I have that Esau never went to the moon is a video called A Funny Thing Happened on, a, on the Way to the Moon. All right. First, let me read this. Uh, let me read uh, this uh, information here. Nearly four decades after he became the first American to orbit the Earth, Senator John Herschel Glenn is launched into space again as a payload specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery on October 29, 1998. At 77 years of age, Glenn was the oldest human ever to travel in space. Okay? So there's a reason why they did that. They want they want to find out how long can an old person survive in outer space. Why? Because the majority of you your your top elites, banking elite, what have you, the majority of them are old. They're up in age. Now this this is what I was telling you about. There's a video, a documentary called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. All right. And when you when you watch this video they give compelling evidence that Esau never really made it to the moon. Okay? Esau never made it to the moon. They never went to the moon. So for you to break down Obadiah 1 and 3 that way is not correct. It is inaccurate. The reason why, and that shows me that these guys are not prudent. They don't do their research. Okay? I mean, you're still carrying on with that old breakdown from one west. You know, Obadiah 1 and 3, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. And of course, that's talking about Esau. And uh, even Nate, you know, he says that's talking about Esau, which is correct. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Do thou exalt thyself as the eagle. And the reason why I read that scripture is it, it ties with... Uh, uh, the other mistake he made, which is located in Second uh, Ezra, the eleventh chapter, where it speaks about the twelve feathered wings, which represent the twelve Caesars of Rome, beginning with uh, Julius Caesar and ending with Domitian Caesar, which he Nate, you know, Nate says it. He brought it out, and you know, we've been teaching that. Elder Pastor been teaching that for years. Okay, he, I guess Nate finally got it. But where he made his great, he made his big mistake is he said the three feathers, that's in Second Ezra's the eleventh chapter. Um, I think 
one of the feathers he said was the, the United States, which is completely off on that. Okay, that the three feathers that Second Ezra's eleven chapter is talking about was the triumvirate, which was a prelude, basically the triumvirate, which consisted of uh, Julius Caesar, uh, Pompey, I forgot his full name, Pompey, and Crassius, Linus Crassius, but he had a middle name. So it was those three guys. When you look up the word triumvirate, it's three acting as one. Okay. Um, that's what you had before the 12 Caesars or before the Caesars of Rome was established. You had you first had the triumvirate. Now, I believe Pompey was killed. He was beheaded. Uh, Crassius was killed in battle, and that left Julius Caesar, which ultimately, when you go into history, which ultimately became the first Caesar of Rome. Okay, Julius Caesar. And you know, he got a little uh, too big-headed, so he was killed, and Augustus Caesar took his place. Now, 2nd Ezra's 11th chapter goes into that history in a metaphor or in an allegorical form. It goes into that history, all right? That's what that's all about. But the, the part where Nate made a mistake in, in 2nd Ezra's 11 is where he said the three feathers represented uh, the United States. I forgot what other two countries he said the, the, the other two feathers represent, and he was totally off on that. And his breakdown here of, of uh, uh, do, do thou, and do thou set thy nest among the stars, he said that back in 1969, that's the old breakdown we had at the school back in 1969, uh, Esau went to the moon. Esau never made it to the moon. Okay, Esau never made it to the moon. And if you, if you doubt me, watch this video. Uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. It was completely, it was completely a complete setup. It was a hoax. As a matter of fact, um, they hired this guy Stanley Kubrick to 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 uh, to create that hoax. Stanley Kubrick, you know, helped build the sets and all that that they used for the supposed moon landing back in 1969. All right, Stanley Kubrick, and Stanley Kubrick, he brings it out in the movie The Shining. That's what that movie was really all about. It was about Stanley Kubrick revealing that the moon landing was a hoax, okay? But he did it in a... In, obviously, Stanley Kubrick couldn't come out blatantly with it for fear of being killed. So he did it. He did the movie in a, in, a, in a parable form to say that, look, we never went to the moon. It was all a hoax, okay? And that's another video for another time. So no, you can't be breaking down the part where it says, Do thou set thy nest among the stars. You can't be breaking that down as we went to the moon. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So let me let me play it for you. You'll, you'll hear the illustrious Bishop Nathaniel say, uh, uh, back in 1969, we went to the moon. <laughs> you guys need to do your research, man, for real. All of America and evil. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, in 1969, I believe it was, what did America do? Land on the moon. Okay. Yeah. That's what you can see that, that that's that's a Hollywood set right there. You can see that shit is fake. And they landed on the moon with that, that poor excuse of an aircraft right there? Come on, man. And you mean to tell me that you guys are not vigilant enough to see? You're not prudent enough to see through this shit? No, they never landed on the moon. And if they landed on the moon, why didn't that senator, uh John Herschel, Glenn 77 year old senator why didn't he go to the moon he could have easily went to the moon they went it was so easy for them to go to the moon back in 1969 here we are in 2022 if it was so easy for them to go to the moon back in 1969 how come they haven't done it okay <laughs> it's 2020 2022 and they haven't done it they still haven't went to the moon by now, by now they would have had condominiums on the moon they would have had supermarkets on the moon Okay, they never went to the moon. That's the point. All right. So, when it says "Do thou set thy nest among the stars," it's talking about their space stations that are up there in outer space. It has nothing to do with the moon. Matter of fact, it has nothing to do with the moon. That's just a lie that Esau told. He went to the moon. This scripture has really has nothing to do with the moon. It's talking about outer space. They got their space re retreats out there. They got uh, weapons. 
in outer space. Uh, it was Reagan who talked about a, a six military branch in outer space. And then Trump, uh, Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, also brought that up of, of putting uh, military weapons in outer space. Why? Because they want to defend the, the uh, planet Earth from the invasion that's coming from outer space, which is Yahweh Shai and the angels. Like the scripture says, there was war in heaven. That's in the book of Revelation. You know, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. So Esau has his weapons out there in outer space to try to uh, defeat Yahweh Shai and the angels when Yahweh Shai comes back. Okay? So that's what that means. Now, later in this video, you, you, you hear... Let me see if I can find it. That's what it means to set their nest among the stars. No. Then, no, you're wrong. Wrong. That's not what it means. They never made it to the moon. You got to explain it correctly. Now, let's... let's uh, and the Israelites started to wake up. And when you go back to Malachi... Uh, what is that? Malachi 4. Which they came up under them. And we... Uh, you just got to get it right. You just got to come all, come all, come all the way home. You got to get it a hundred percent. That's right. All right. It's not. I got to say this. You got people teaching that that means the, the America removes the wars against Vietnam, for example. Let me tell you something. America did not lose the Vietnam War. Do you realize that America? It wasn't no war. It was just a, a police action. The, the number one reason America went to Vietnam. I mean, come on. It went to Vietnam to, for the, the poppy fields, man. All right. Uh, the uh, heroin trade was a, a very lucrative trade. And the, the, the resources, the raw resources, was over there in Vietnam to make that heroin. Okay? So that's why they went over there. That's what that was all about. Same thing with... Uh, uh, the the desert storm. The reason why they went over there, even Bush said it, was over oil. You know, basically, it's the banking family sending their uh, sending their uh, security guards, their high class security guards in the form of so called soldiers, to uh, steal not only steal the resources of certain lands like, uh, you know, Iraq, with the desert storm, and then Vietnam with the poppy fields, send their uh, high-class security guards in the form of an army to not only steal the resources, but to police it, to guard against it and make sure no one else steals it. That's really that what that's all about, okay? Truth be told. This is why General Smedley Butler said war is a racket. Indeed, it is a racket. This is not, you know, back in the past, war was fought over a country defending its freedom. This, this, <laughs> come on, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Vietnam, the Vietnamese never came to America and posed a threat to America's uh, freedom. Yet that's how the war was sold. That's how. Yet that's how that uh, that um, and they and they showed you that in the movie, uh, the movie um, uh, Born on the Fourth of July, which is which is the story of Ron Kovic. All right, you know Ron Kovic believed that crap. Uh, America. You know, the communists are coming. We got to defend our freedom. All right. It was all bullshit. It was all nonsense. OK, those those soldiers were sent to Vietnam to to help get the resources for the, to make the heroin. All right. The poppy fields and then to police it, to guard against it, make sure nobody else goes in there and take it. OK, because it was a lucrative trade. All right. The, the heroin. That's why so many. Uh, so many um, soldiers came back strung out on heroin, strung out on drugs. Okay, that's really what it was about. All right. And then the, later you had the Desert Storm. That was about oil, you know, uh, clearing the pathway to put a, a a pipeline there. I mean, you know, you can go more into depth in it, but it was really about oil, the resource of oil, and that's this devil, man. That's what this devil does. To get other countries' resources, he'll create a cover story, which will justify war with that country. Then he can send his troops in there, and they can take over the resources 
and, and some of the troops remain there to help police around the area where the resources are being taken so nobody else can go in there and take them. Okay, that's how this devil gets down. All right. And, it, you know, it's it's more intricate than that. But I just gave you the surface, the surface exp explanation. But a police action wasn't even a, it wasn't even a law, a, a war. Because you had all you had the U.N. When the U.N. you had all these U.N. nations. And the, the war between uh, uh, Russia and uh, the Ukraine which has been going on since 2014, if they just start talking about it, like it's a new war, that's nothing but a, a civil war because all these countries... Yeah, basically, like General Smedley Butler said, war is a racket. Now, the real war, you want to talk about a war? The real war is going to happen when Yahawashai comes, all right? When Yahawashai comes and bring his forces, which are the angels, and bring it to Esau. That's going to be the real war. You want to talk about a war. Yahweh is going to bring war against Esau. That's Isaiah the 63rd chapter. Beginning at the first verse. Also Revelation the 19th chapter. Okay. Revelation the 19th chapter. Where it says there was war in heaven. Okay. Here it is right here. Revelation 19 and 11. It says this, it says this, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse that represents Yahweh Shai. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. That's our Lord Yahweh Shai. And he's coming with these multitude of angels. One of those angels being uh, Michael the archangel. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So you want to talk about the real war, that's going to be Yahawashai and the angels against Esau and his forces. That's going to be the real war. Nothing, there ain't nothing phony about that war. Now all the other wars that Esau talk about, that, that's, that's, some, that's phony, some phony shit. All right? But even before Yahawashai and the angels, at the same time, you're going to have war between Russia and America. Now, that is, that's another example of real war. Kind of forgot to mention that. I'm so pumped up of seeing Yahweh I come and bring war to Esau. Kind of forgot that America and Russia is going to mix it. Now, that's going to be a war, of course. That's your World War III. Okay, your World War III, which goes back to um, Revelation, uh, what is it? Revelation, the 8th chapter, the 13th verse. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It mentions three woes. Now, so far, we've already had two woes, and the third one is going to be the third woe. That's America and Russia. And you see the, you see the seeds of it being planted right now with the, the uh, Ukraine-Russia thing that's going on, and America is siding with Ukraine, and uh, Russia is against Ukraine. So all of that's going to lead to World War III, absolutely. Let's get back to the video. Because... All these countries have a seat in the UN. So that's a civil war. Or you can run around talking about America lost to Vietnam. No, the current uh, system that you have in the missiles and totally annihilated. That's not how wars work. Like Darius, Daniel, the first chapter, I believe, either Daniel, which is a defeat ISIS. But they got to kill a couple of million. Afghanistan would be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be gone. It, it would be over in literally, nor do we want to be policemen. A period of time, you understand that. They say uh, Ukraine has to win the war. Uh, well, how can I say? A, a, a part of the uh, USSR. He's just bringing back and it's going to take you decades to build it back up. I'm I mean, weapons that can wipe out cities and states fight on a conventional level. Zelensky uh, in the fly zone. You know what that means? Remember when um, the World Trade Center happened? I want to get to the part where he speaks about the three feathers from uh, Second Ezra, the 11th chapter, which Nate went off. He said, I think one of the feathers he said was the United States. I can't remember the other two.
where a U.S. North has for is a no-fly zone. For the pullback and not to pay close attention. Pay close attention. Okay, I think this is it. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then saw I the dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle. Y'all see that? An eagle, which had 12 feathered wings and three heads. The 12 feathered wings are the 12 seasons. Now, I want you all to get a pen. Right, the 12 seasons, which he's correct on that which starts with Julius Caesar and ends with Domitian Caesar. Okay? All of you to get a pen. Okay? Bear with me. Bear with me. Let's discuss the 12 seasons. The 12 feathers begins with Julius Caesar, followed by Augustus Caesar, Followed by Tiberius season, Claudius season, Titus and Domitian. Also in uh, Second Ezra's eleven chapter, and also in the twelfth chapter, it speaks about the three heads. Three heads does not represent Julius, Augustus, and Tiberius. It represents Julius, um, Cra uh, Crassus, or uh, and or um, Anthony, Mark Anthony, and they were fighting for position. Julius ultimately got the the prominent position of Caesar. And, and by the way, the Caesars was named after him. It became a, a title. His name was Julius Caesar. He was an emperor. Yeah, the um, also known as the Triumvirate. Okay. Um, let me see if I can find it. Had some information on the triumvirate. Here we go. This is from Penn State, the first triumvirate. Uh, the first triumvirate saw its end with the deaths of both Crassius and Julia. Uh, Julia was the only bond holding Pompey and Caesar together. With her death, there was virtually nothing keeping these two men from an inevitable fight. Her death in the year 54 BCE during childbirth, as well as her baby a few days later, signaled the end of the triumvirate. What truly broke the triumvirate apart was when Crassius was killed on the field of battle against the Parthian 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 general uh, general Serenus in the year 53 BCE Crassius found his forces divided and the Parthian Parthian army massacring all of its forces. Crash's death in the year 53 BCE made the triumvirate no more since there was only two left. Since there was only two left. With neither Julia nor Crassius in the picture, it's only, it only left Caesar and Pompey making up the triumvirate. The final knife in the triumvirate was when Caesar and Pompey were enemies on the battle, battlefield when the civil war started in the year of 49 BCE. On January 10th, Pompey fighting on the side of the Republic and Caesar on the side of the, the Empire, essentially. Uh, Pompey did not stay in Rome when the civil war started. He took his leave to the east where he had made many friends and allies, he chose Egypt as his destination, ex expecting to find safe haven while under the Ptolemaic wing or the Tol Ptolemaic king. 
uh, Ptolemy, Ptolemy Eleutis, uh, to Pompey's misfortune, he was murdered. Yeah, I think he was beheaded by the king's ministers. Uh, the king's advisor is to have said, a corpse doesn't bite. <laughs> they beheaded Pompey and took his signet ring, which they presented to Caesar on his arrival to Egypt. Caesar wept at the death of Pompey and, and had his murderers found and killed because of the dishonor that they bestowed upon Pompey by killing him in such a fashion. Though the triumvirate died with the death of Crassius in 53 BCE, the death of Pompey in the year 48 BCE left Caesar, that would be Julius Caesar, the only player of the triumvirate and the strongest man in Rome opposed by, unopposed by anyone. Right, so that left the uh, Julius Caesar, who became the first emperor, the first Caesar. All right. So that was just some history on uh, the triumvirate. Let's, let's read some more here. This is from study.com. The first triumvirate, a look at first century Rome. Is the definition of triumvirate, 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 trium, triumvirate definition is a group of three people working together, especially in leadership roles of some kind. The term originated in ancient Rome to describe a group of three most powerful men in the power or in power at, at the time. Okay, and that would be Julius Caesar, Crassius, or uh, you see the names here, Julius Caesar, uh, Gnaeus, Gnaeus, Magnus Pompey, and Marcus Licinius Crassius. So that is Julius Caesar, Gnaeus, Magnus Pompey, and Marcus Licinius Crassius. In response to laws being passed by the Senate to try and restrain them and limit the power. Now, we just heard the history of what happened to Crassius and what happened to Pompey, which set the stage for Julius Caesar to be the first emperor, the first Caesar of Rome. Okay? Gaius Julius Caesar. Okay? Okay? So let's get back to the video. Two, followed by Tiberius, number three, Caligula, number four, Claudius. Look at him real good. Full had to hear some of my boy back. I'm back here today. One of them is living through the spirit. Okay. The Teflon Don. He wanted to be president, man. I'm the fucking pitch hard. That's this is a, 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 read it, but it's. I want to get to the part where uh, Nate speaks about the three heads. The three heads. Let me show you what, what the part I'm talking about. Uh, let's go to Second Ezra 11 and one. Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had twelve feathered wings. Those were the 12 Caesars of Rome, beginning with uh, Julius Caesar, who came out of the triumvirate. We went into that history and ended with Domitian Caesar. OK, Domitian Caesar. So when you count from Julius Caesar to Domitian Caesar, you get 12. That's your 12 feathered wings. Then it speaks about these three heads. That was the triumvirate, which preceded the, the, uh, the succession of Caesars that ruled over Rome. It started with the triumvirate because out of the triumvirate came the first Caesar, Julius Caesar. But you're not going to hear Nate say that. Read it, but it speaks about seven years and in the middle, the, uh, the Jake general, with Julius Tiberius, he was circumcised in the room. He was the one that asked prominent men 
No, I got to go back in Acts 12. He was a, he was an emperor. Uh, Paul being put to death. As, and and was put to death. Domitian was in there. Now, after Domitian, Domitian was, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Nerva, which he was a Jake. Okay, so let's listen to a little bit more. Galba, number seven. Both Titus, number of came up from the sea, an eagle, which had 12 feathered wings and three heads. The three heads. Now, here he's going to talk about the three heads. It's this right this down. <laughs> it says, write it down. The United States of America <laughs> is on the <laughs> left side. Oh, my goodness. The head in the center is Rome. The oh, head on goodness. the right side is Britain, the British Empire. What? Wrong, 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 wrong. Let's bring it back. You went off. Heads. The three heads. This right this down. The United States of America is on the left side. The head in the center is Rome. The head on the right side is Britain, the British Empire. What? <laughs> what? Are you? Are you? Man, you were going. You were going good. <laughs> you were going good. And I, how the hell did? Oh my goodness! Are you listening how, to this? I, I don't know how he got that. I don't know how. He, maybe it's the same spirit that told him we don't have the. Names of the father and the son. <laughs> I don't know how he got that. And I'm not even into the history, this history, like Elder Apostle Ta and Elder Apostle Rimelab is in. It, you know, the history, this history here. I'm not even into it like that. And I deduce through the spirit that the, the triumvirate, you know, was uh, uh, Second Ezra 11. And uh, the first verse, the part where it speaks about this, the three heads, Right. It made sense to me that that was the triumvirate because the succession of uh, the Roman Caesars, which started with Julius, came out of the triumvirate. All right. Julius Caesar came out of the triumvirate. OK, we just read the history. But you heard what Nate said, right? Uh, Apostle Ramlob, Apostle Gabar, <laughs> are you listening to this? Oh, yeah. You brothers in the GMS that go to He was going so good. He was going so good that yeah, he hit yeah. the wrong turn. He also hit the wrong turn with uh, um, uh, the book of uh, Obadiah. Though thou set thy nest among the stars. He, he pulled out that old breakdown. Because he doesn't really do his research, you know. If he would have researched, he would have found out America never really made it to the moon. That's another lie. That's another. But he'll say it's a conspiracy theory. Remember, he's the same guy that said a conspiracy theorist is a nut, a crazy person. But there's... there's so many uh, facts that prove America never made it to, uh, you know, to the moon. So he was wrong on that. And he's also wrong on the three heads of, of the eagle. OK, who had the 12 feathered wings. OK, the, the 12 feathered wings were the Caesars of Rome, beginning with Julius Caesar all the way down to Domitian Caesar. And that's what. Second Ezra 11 is really all about that history. Then going into the 12th chapter. Now the three heads are the triumvirate, which preceded the succession of Caesars of Rome, which began with Julius, who came out of the triumvirate. You got to keep mentioning it over and over again so you brothers get it. Okay? Man, come on, brother. <laughs> come on, Ak. Yeah. So once again, you know, the illustrious Bishop Nathaniel... He came so close, but no cigar. <laughs> All right. So it's on to the next one.